Section 120 in Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive Course deals with possession and how you express it with Greek pronouns. You'll find this discussion in Hansen and Quinn on pages 444 to 445. This whole section is really about how Greek has a couple of different options with every sort of possession. Now, I've told you from the beginning that casual possessive pronouns, like um, he was reading his book, uh, will only use the article for the his book thing. We understand in Greek that connection of possession with the subject of the sentence just by the article. In Greek, you're only going to use possessive pronouns and possessive adjectives when you are making a point about the possession, when there's some emphasis. That being said, let's look and see what options Greek has for that. And let's go through this by person. So let's start with first person. We have at our disposal the first person possessive adjective, emos, eme, emon, which means my or mine, and that's perfectly fine to use for possession. In which case, you would say, for instance, ho emos philos, you would put that possessive adjective in attributive position, and then it means my friend. Done. But you can also use your new personal pronouns, and in predicate position, you could put mu. Ho philos mu means really literally, if you want to keep the pronounness, the friend of me, but of course that amounts to my friend, and we're done again. Notice that I'm using the enclitic version of the first person pronoun to indicate this kind of possession. We can also, in the plural, use the possessive adjective, he meteros, he metera, he meteron, which means our or ours, and in attributive position, we'll get ha he meteros philos, which means our friend. But again, you can use the genitive of the pronoun and get ha philos he mon, the friend of us, or again, our friend. So you can already see how this works, and it's going to be the same in the second person, where we do also have a possessive adjective, sos seison, and so we can have that, hosos philos, your friend, and then we can use the genitive of the personal pronoun in its enclitic form and get ho philos su, so ho philos the friend of you or your friend again. In the plural, again, we have a really nice possessive adjective, humeteros, humetera, humeteron, your or y'all's because we like to make it clear we're talking about second person plural and what we get then is ha humeteros philos your friend or y'all's friend and then if we want to use instead the second person plural pronoun in the genitive we'll get ha philos hemon the friend of y'all or again your friend or y'all's friend Let's move on to the third person. And here our options are only with pronouns. So if you want to do the attributive position version, you are going to use the genitive of hutos, haute, tuta. And so you see that here, ha tutu philos, the friend of that man or his friend. And then in the predicate position, you'll use the genitive of autos, aute, auton. So, ha philos autu, the friend of him, also his friend. Of course, we can make this feminine as well. Ha tautes philos, her friend, or ha philos autes, her friend. Ha tutone philos means the friend of those people, so their friend, because we're going to deal with third person plural as well, or in the predicate version, ha philos auton, their friend. So that's it with the sort of regular first, second, and third person options for possession, but we also want to talk about 
what happens when you need to have that idea of reflexiveness, where the possessive adjective or the possessive pronoun is looking back to the subject of the sentence. So, epemsa ton emautu adelfon means I sent the brother of myself. And here, because emautu is masculine, you know that the I in epemsa has to be a man, has to be a masculine subject. We can also have epemsa ton emautes adelfon. I sent the brother of myself. I sent my brother, my own brother. And that pronoun is feminine, so the subject of epemsa is a woman, is a feminine subject. And so both of those we would translate with, I sent my own brother. In English, we can't bring out the gender of the subject of the sentence, but it could be important for you to know in whatever context you're reading this Greek. Epemsas ton seau tu adelfon switches us into the second person uh, reflexive pronoun, and then we get that masculine form seau tu of yourself, and that implies that you are masculine, or epemsas ton seau tes adelfon of yourself with the feminine, but in either case, you sent your own brother. And then in the third person, epemsa ton eheau tu adelfon, once again, that's masculine. So that implies that you would have to translate this sentence, he sent his own brother. And then if we have instead epemsa ton heau tes adelfon, you know that you have to translate that, she sent her own brother. Now, if we want to go plural here, we're going to use the genitive of the reflexive pronoun, which is already two words in Greek, epemsamen ton hemeteron auton adelphon. We sent our own brother. But Hanson and Quinn lets you know that often you're going to see that without the auton and still want to emphasize the reflexiveness of it. So we sent our own brother is also a good translation of epemsamen ton hemeteron adelphon, without the auton. And the same goes for the second person plural, epemsata ton humeteron auton adelphon means y'all sent your own brother, but you may also see it without the auton. And now in the third person, epemson ton sveteron auton adelphon is one thing you might see, or you could have epemson ton auton adelphon. And both of those mean they sent their own brother. So keep an eye out for those different possibilities. And really that's all this video is about, that there's more than one way to express possession with Greek pronouns and Greek possessive adjectives, and you should try not to be surprised by any of them.